Greetings and welcome to Learn to Adult, the podcast guiding you to adulting better. My name is Abby and this week we are going to be talking about changing a tire because sometimes you get flat tires and it's terrible and you need to fix them because you don't have AAA. And since I didn't want to be talking into the microphone for probably four and a half hours of me trying to explain how to change a tire, I have the nearest expert I could find. My husband. Say hi, Ty. Hi, Ty. Oh, perfect. See, you're so good at this. Yes. You're going to be perfect at this. Um, Ty has changed many a tire. Also, we've experienced flat, <laughs> flat tires. What was it? Oklahoma? Driving back from Oklahoma to Ohio, we ended up shredding a tire on a Sunday. Yeah, we were somewhere in Missouri during... The only 30-minute dry spot yeah. of a you know, tropical storm. It was awesome. Yeah. It was Sunday. We needed to be back to work the next morning, and we neither one of us could call off. <laughs> so it was, we had to make it. It was very sitcom-y. Yeah. And yeah. we lost a tire. It was towards the end of the day, too, on a Sunday. So who's going to change our tire? How in the world were we close enough to a tire place? I have no idea. Because you also didn't have a spare. I had a a lightweight spare. Oh, you had a lightweight spare. Yeah, I don't I don't recall just that. I just remember the little had... donut tire. Okay, um, okay, yeah. That so makes that sense. got us to where we needed to be, which is all of four miles down the road. Which was fantastic. Yeah. So so anyway, yes, we are going to be talking about changing tires. So the first thing we will talk about proactive steps. First one, get AAA. It's the end of the podcast. Triple <laughs> <laughs> A is good. Um, a lot of the time, your car insurance company may offer roadside assistance. Uh, it's usually a couple extra bucks mm-hmm. up for your plan. Um, I know that ours has it. Yeah. We're with Progressive, not that they're paying us. But um, they should. They could or should. Uh, so your insurance company can offer it, and typically credit cards will have it as an additional service. Um, so you can take a look. You may not have to buy AAA, although in my mind, AAA is worthwhile because you can get discounts at other places. Like movie tickets. Yeah, so worth having. When you get a rental car, is that part of the insurance? Like uh, getting, like if you get like the insurance or whatever, they'll come in and fix your broken tire? You know, I don't know. I've never got the rental car insurance because I'm usually never. using my credit card to get it. Oh. And my credit card has rental car coverage. Okay. Well, we'll get into that so I do way that. later. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, AAA, worth it. Now, if you don't have that or for some reason, I don't know, you can't get AAA because you're maybe not in the United States. Must think globally. Must yes. think globally, Abby. Well, and there's also the situation of what if it's 3 in the morning, you're trying to rush somewhere. That's true. And you're told that AAA could be two or three hours away. You don't have that kind of time. Yeah. If you know how to change it yourself, you can get back on the road uh, inside of 30 minutes, typically. Yeah. So, okay, other proactive steps here. If you're filling up the air in your tire, you should also probably fill up the air in your spare tire, which I buried the lead here. Find your spare tire. <laughs> <laughs> um, I drove a Mini Cooper for the longest time that did not have a spare tire. And I had the dealer on his hands and knees looking for the spare when I asked if one existed. So sometimes you just don't have one if your car is small enough. Right. And your car had run-flat tires. Well, that is a whole different thing. Yes. Right. Either have run-flats and no spare or, yeah, I think that's why Minis had run-flats is because we can't, you can't carry a spare. Yeah, on. no room for a spare. But most car. I also drove a Volkswagen Beetle, another small car, but did in fact have a spare in there, mm-hmm. a full-size spare. So you can have two different kinds of tires as a spare. You can have a full-size tire. Mm-hmm. Or you can have what's referred to as a donut, or is that the same as a whatever we had in Missouri? Yeah, that would be a donut. Um, So it it looks like half of a tire. I mean, it's still completely round and is a tire. It still is a tire. It's It's black, it's round. Yeah, it's most noticeably not the tire you're replacing. So that's the key part. They are made to go typically no more than 55 miles an hour. And you don't really want to drive them more than 50 miles. So they are made to get you from a dangerous spot to a safe spot. Perfect. Okay, so first step, find out if you have one. Also figure out if you have a re- like a real big kid tire or a donut. Yes. Yes. Um, 
you should also, when you're, uh, again, what I started with for some reason was if you are filling up the tires on your car, you should also make sure that the air pressure in your spare is also full. Because nothing says a good time like replacing a flat with another flat. Correct. So. Uh, you can also do what I've done in the past of carry a can of the, the tire repair inflation foam. Mm-hmm. And maybe not use it on your your flat tire because more than likely you've destroyed it as you're driving down the road mm-hmm. and it's ripping to shreds. But if your flat or if your spare ends up being flat, you can use that to fix a flat can mm-hmm. on your spare, um, just to get you from A to B. You're gonna have to throw your spare away anyway right. and replace it once you're done. That's a way to get by. So another three four dollar can is worth having. Perfect. Okay. Other proactive steps. What tools do you have in your car? Now, usually, like, I know the Beetle was this way. If you had a spare inside the inside the middle of it, there was the jack and the lug nut wrench. And I feel like there was something else, but I don't remember what it was. But there was just enough to change it. I know all this because I, in fact, changed a flat tire on the Beetle a couple of times. So Right. Uh, so you're, most of the cars, no matter if it's a truck, a small car, light car, if it has a spare at all, it will also include the jack and the lug nut wrench, and uh, you'll typically use the the wrench itself to work the jack, whether it be a pump style jack or a twist jack where you you actually will put the lug wrench as a handle and spin the jack around. Um, So it may not be obvious to you, and that's why reading the manual is good, to learn how to operate your jack before you need it. Yes, you should also know where to put your jack ahead of time. So, you know, on a nice rainy Sunday afternoon and you're thinking to yourself, I need to do something, pull out your owner's manual. Figure out how your uh, your car jack works. Maybe if you decide you don't like that jack, proactively go out and get a new jack. Get a scissor lift. Or it's not scissor lift. That's huge. What, is it? <laughs> what are they? There's, there's like a... There's a... Well, yeah, you're going to have the... The scissor style jack where you spin it around, spin, mm-hmm. spin, 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 and it'll go, go go up. It has pretty much like a really large screw between it, and as you twist it, mm-hmm. it'll slowly go up. The other style is like a, it's called a bottle jack. Okay. And that's where you're just cranking up and down, up and down, and up and down, and with each push down, your jack's going to go up. Okay. Um, your mention of the placement of yes. where to put it is very critical. The car itself and within the owner's manual, it'll help describe where to put it. And then on the frame of the car will be some form of an identification marker telling you this is where to put the jack. Put it here, dummy. If you put it in the wrong spot, you can very likely destroy a good chunk of your car. Or you can dent the frame or just make a mess out of the whole work. There's a, uh, I think it's an I Love Lucy where they stick the jack under the hood and just go, 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 go until you see the jack come up and break out of the top of the hood. I feel like jacks don't actually go that high, but comedically it was it really worked. Right, right. Yes. And I don't know why you'd jack a hood up, but hey, if you need to. Sure. I mean, if you got to. Well, they kind of didn't understand what they were doing. They didn't have this wonderful podcast to guide them. That is true. Yes. yes. So, okay, so all of those things, you have these things, you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So you're driving down the road, you're driving down the road, and your tire is flat. You Usually you can tell, like, if... When you're driving down the road, if you feel kind of like your car is starting to shake, kind of thumping down the road, pull over. Double check. This actually happened to me, what, a month or two ago? I I drove all the way home, and as I was coming back, I heard a thump, 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 thump. But my car wasn't sort of doing the jostling thing back and forth. Got out and looked at it, and there was a bolt right through the dead center of my tread. And somehow was not losing air. It had the... The good fortune of not doing that. So I was able to slowly drive it to a tire service area. Right. You actually lucked out in the fact that the thing that had penetrated the tire had stayed there and held the air in. Yes. uh, Which is nice. So if you're driving down the road and you hear a clack, 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 it could be a rock in your tire. It could Mm -hmm. be a screw or a bolt or anything like that. And that would be a good indicator. Maybe take a quick look. Uh, And if you get the opportunity, take it somewhere to get it repaired quickly. Um, a lot of gas stations, if you see that they have a service garage attached, um, or you can still find tire places in most towns, uh, take it to them. They can patch the tire much easier yeah. if you haven't destroyed it. 
Yes. <laughs> and I think I'll get into the destruction of tires towards the end of it. But okay, so we're driving down the road. Our tire is flat. There's there's a nail or something in it, and it's gone completely flat, and you can't fill it up. So we have to replace it. So yeah. pull over the side of the road safely. Yes. Me. It's a safe distance off the road. Put your four ways on. Mm-hmm. If you have the that big kit they always tell you to have in the back of your car that I feel like no one has in the back of the car. But if you are smart and have that, that's when you get the road flares out and the little little orange triangle thing. Right. If you're that right. guy, yeah, have that all going out, which is great because I've seen people with those. And it's like, hey, okay, this person, A, needs help. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, you're signaling for, hey, some please, please come help me because something is terribly wrong with my car. Um, but it's also making sure that people see you. Right. To not hit you. Visibility is key. Yes, especially when, you know, you don't, br- you you usually don't get a flat tire in the middle of the day. On a nice day when it'd be nice to change a tire, it's the middle of the night, it's raining or snowing, and it's been the worst day of your life. Pretty much. That's when your tire becomes flat. Yes. Yes. So when everything is going wrong, you can just anticipate a flat tire. Which is what happened on the day of the bolt. That's I perfect. believe texting you, I quit, I give up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, okay, your tire is flat. You put out your road flares, you got your four ways on. Mm-hmm. Next step. A one, yeah, you make certain that you are not in the middle of the road. Yes. Um, if it is a passenger side tire, uh, just being off of the road is helpful because you need to make certain you still have a safe, solid ground that you're going to put your, your jack on. Yes. Uh, so if you're on gravel, it's not going to be quite solid enough. It may mm-hmm. not be safe enough. So you might have to... You know, hobble your car somewhere that you can get to a safe, solid point. Slowly. Yeah, slowly hobble. Um, if your flat tire is on the driver's side, you need to be extra far off the road. Um, still on a safe spot, but that way, while you're changing things, passing traffic isn't going to murder you. Yes, um, that would be nice. Okay, so you're off. You've got your four ways on. Your car is in park, and you've got your park brake on. And it is off, I assume? Preferably not running. Yes. Um, Yes, we want your car off. Uh, So at that point, you're going to, you're going to have to get your your spare tire out. You have to get your tools. So you need your jack and your lug nut wrench. Uh, That could be the four-way wrench that you see on all the mechanic shows. Looks like a plus. Looks like a plus sign. It has a bunch of different ends on it that are just big sockets. Um... Or it could just be a a single wrench, uh, like you commonly see tow truck drivers wielding as weapons. Yeah. Um, Um, I will say the the, the hardest thing about all of this is going to be um, wrangling the tires. Um, Fill the tires, very heavy. Um, But the the lug nut part, you know, can can be engineered to be easier. Um, right. If you if you are thinking to yourself that you have little uh, noodle arms, which I I do, especially when it comes to the lug nuts, um, you can go ahead and make sure that you have something to help give yourself leverage to to break the the seal on some of those lug nuts. Um, some of them come with breaker bars. They help make your handle longer. So the farther away you are from the lug nut with the wrench, the more leverage you're going to have. You could also, if you think that you are just the noodliest of noodle arms, you can get a really big pipe that will fit on there, and you could probably get a good distance away and be able to just easily crack it open. Right, right. Use physics to your benefit. Exactly. Yeah. Science saves us all. So the further out that you can go, the less force it's going to retire require to put the same amount of force yeah. on the lug nut itself. But yes, yeah, so the, so the hardest part of this, I guarantee you, is going to be wrangling the tires. Right. They're and, they're not easy to manage. And and I'm going to tell you ahead of time, you're going to get black all over your clothes. <laughs> Just you're you're not going to be able to get out of it. Right. So. But that's okay. That. It'll wash off. Yes, it will. It will. Um, but just letting everybody know, it's a dirty job handling tires. Dirty. Okay. So Next. we have our spare down. Yes. We have our jack. We yes. have our lug wrench. We, we stopped not, crying. Yeah. We are not going to put the jack in place yet. Okay. The first thing you're going to do, once you've made certain your car is in park, Ooh, you're still on one. the ground. I know this one. Okay. We're going to crack our lug nuts. We are going to crack our lug nuts. Yes. So the idea is you want to get the real hard press out of the way before you lift your tire off the ground. Um, if you're tire is up in the air, 
then you're actually going to be fighting your engine or your park brake to keep the tire from moving while you're trying to crack those nuts. Uh, that is going to actually be very hard on the engine itself or the brakes. And I've seen many cars where the lug nut is on so well, thanks to rust, uh, that you can overpower the brakes and just keep on spinning the tire. Excellent. So use the wonderful power of gravity and friction to benefit you. Uh, crack, <laughs> crack the lug nuts, get them to where they're at least movable before you put the jack in place. Yes. All so. praise science. This is basically what this portion of the podcast is. Right, right. Science is wonderful. Um, and before you even get to the lug nuts, you do have to, you know, there may be a hubcap in the way. Yes. Some cars have the nifty little hubcap where it covers up the lug nuts. And and if you still have the the lug wrench that came with your car, the back end of it will look like a flathead screwdriver. Mm. It's designed to go in the little flat opening spot that you'll see around your hubcap. So you can use it as like a pry bar of just pop. And those are just held in with little clips. So yeah. You, you put, it's, the, the Volkswagen was like that. You, it's very surprisingly made of plastic. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, I thought this was a lot different. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you've popped off hubcaps. We've, and now we've cracked our lug nuts. And you don't need to do much. You just need to make sure that you've got that initial force done so you can right. twist them. You don't want to get them so loose you can remove them. Before you jacked it up. Right. Just get them loose. Do not remove them. Okay. Um, so at that point, we need to move the jack underneath the car. Okay. Make certain that you find the secure and proper location to jack up the car. So it'll be marked typically with an X or Things some kind of Things to add to the dots. kit. A flashlight. A flashlight is a good idea. Uh, most people still have their phones. So you have a flashlight on your phone. Oh, please. You've got a flat tire in its middle of the night and it's raining. Your phone's dead. That's true. Okay, so add a flashlight to your kit. Uh, you should have one anyway. So you have a flashlight. Yes. So back to okay. the beginning of the podcast when we were preparing our kit, you need a flashlight. Yes. All right. Remember back then? Let's go tell us. Remember past <laughs> us? We were so smart. Right. Um, okay, so we're going to get the jack underneath the car. Uh, we're going to know where it goes before we even get to this point, but yes. we're going to double check and make sure it's, it's going to be, point. cause there's going to be, there's four locations to put your jack right. and you're going to put it in the one. This, this seems like common sense, but just saying it, it goes in the one closest to your tire that you are replacing. Right. Yes. Yes. You know, to jack up the back end to change up the front end. So. Right. That yes. is not convenient yes. um, or helpful. Yeah. No. Um, and the, the jack that comes with your car is typically designed to be the best fit for that spot. Mm -hmm. So if you've bought a used car or if you've broken your jack or lost your jack, something like that, your best bet is to actually get the proper replacement for mm -hmm. it. That way the the anchor points and the, the mouth of the jack itself is going to properly fit on the frame because you don't want anything wobbling. No. Yes. No. Giant wobbling tonnage of car. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. Big wobble, no good. Yes. Um, so, okay, we're going we're gonna to put the jack in. We've got it at the right spot. We're going to use, most commonly, our lug wrench itself mm -hmm. to help twist this thing or jack it up, whatever we have to do. Uh, so we're going to slowly lift the car up off the ground. Slowly, yes. Yeah. Key, slowly. So the ideal point is you're going to get your tire, uh, your flat tire, you want to get it about six inches off of the ground. Six inches. Six inches okay. off of the ground. Um, if you're in a big truck be yeah. a little bit obvious you're going to go a little bit bigger than that mm -hmm. um, but six inches is going to give you enough room that you can get this tire off without needing to lift it too terribly high and do too much manhandling yes um, okay so you're six inches off the ground you're going to remove the rest of your lug nuts now that they're nice and loose yes. you should be able to spin them off or they're going to be pretty easy um, make certain during the entire time you do not get under the tire or under the car. Yes. No part of you goes under anything. I did read a nifty little tip on Reddit of mm -hmm. saying when you remove your tire, you know, even though you're not supposed to be under or any part of your legs or anything under the car, you take your the tire that you've removed and put it slightly under the car so that if it does for some reason fall and your leg is underneath it, it might break a little bit of the fall. It, you're, it's still not going to do a lot, of, a lot of good. It seemed like a good tip. I don't know how much is going to help. Yeah. I don't know if it's uh, throwing sand in the wind. I don't know. I could see that helping. I could also see it going really badly. Uh, if for some reason the jack decides to let go mm -hmm. and it falls on the tire, there's a chance that it's just going to bounce your tire up into the air. 
and now you have a flat tire going wild. Well, I mean, it's laying it yeah, the time, in, not sitting straight up. I'm just yeah. saying, you've already had a really bad day. That is true. There's okay. a good chance anything else is going to go wrong. Okay. So we want to do it safely. Preferably, okay. you're going to remove your lug nuts. You're going to get the old tire off, which is just going to be a shimmy. You're going to grab the, the shimmy, left shimmy. and right side and just wiggle it and walk it off. Yep. Um, do it nice and calmly. We don't want the jack going loose or Correct. wild on us. This is the part where the jack goes away. So, yes. It's, right. And that's also, yeah, that's also why we loosen our lug nuts before we get up. Right. You're putting a lot of pressure on it. You don't want that jack going anywhere. Correct. Okay, so we got our tire off. Put it somewhere safe. Keep our lug nuts somewhere safe. Like a pocket or something. We're going to need them to put them back Because it's the middle of the night and it's raining. Yes. And you don't want to put them on the ground because... They they will roll away. They will roll away or you will kick them away. Yes. In the middle of some sort of anger about trying to remove the tire. Right. I just assume everyone has anger issues like I do. <laughs> um, yes. So you do that. You knew, Now we've removed the tire. And you realize, wow, this tire is completely flat and has no air. It's really heavy. Well, now we get to do heavier tire, the one that's full of air. Here's the air. Air doesn't weigh much. Yes, it does. It weighs no. so much. <laughs> so much. No, the tire is not going to weigh more. Well, now it's going to be harder to Even if it's a full-size tire, it's not going to weigh more. And the nice part is it will roll with you. If it's a donut, it'll probably weigh half as much. Yeah. You know what it'll also do? Roll away from you. It will roll away from you. But you can calmly and carefully roll it up to where you need to be. And at this point, you've got your old tire set aside safely. You've got your new spare brought up. Because everyone's calm, cool, and collected right now. As opposed to me, who is screaming into the night and howling at the moon. no reason to be frantic and mad and insane. What is being insane or crying or hysterical going to fix? Welcome to an argument we've been having for 10 years, folks. Yes. So (laughs) if you can't fix it by crying, don't bother. I feel like if I cry hard enough, it'll fix itself. That's a good chance. Or I've just cried so long that some nice gentleman has come and fixed it for me, and then I've stopped crying and he's left because I won't stop sobbing. That's a better chance. Mm. Uh, yes. Okay. So we have our spare up. We're not crying. We're going to align. We're going to align the holes on the spare with the bolts on our wheel. It's going to be a pain in the butt. It really is. This is the sucky part. I do. I dislike this part. I think this is why I think the tire weighs so much more is because this is the, like, at this point you've got the tire off, you've got the jack up and you're like, yes, I'm succeeding. And then it's now I have to put the tire up. Because right. pulling the tire down, gravity helps you. Right. Putting the tire back up, gravity, not as much as your friend. Right. So that's why we're only six inches off the ground exactly. from where the old tire was. Now, we haven't changed the jack at all because that six inches has bought you the space that your new tire is going to need. Yes. So hopefully, you're really only going to be an inch or so off the ground. Yes. And lifting a tire one inch is not as bad. So don't get over overzealous and go a foot and a half in the air. You're just hurting yourself. Yes. So line yourself up, get your spare on, and just kind of calmly wiggle it towards the back until it is as far back as you can push it. Um, in the situation in which you are like in a ditch kind of area, mm-hmm. maybe don't push too much. I'm just kind of imagining the car toppling. Well, okay. Obviously, let's not push this much. If okay. you have, her- I'm just saying, just like yes. No, if you like- have Herculean strength. Um, you're probably not listening to this because you could have changed the tire yourself. Change the tire. Just pick the car up and run it down the street. Right, yeah. right. Um, I'm concerned about two kinds of people, Herculean strength and noodle arms. It's just norm- normal people are, are okay. okay. Okay, okay. Well, then good deal. Okay, so we've got the tire on now. We've the got tire the tire on. On and, and in position. It's ready to go. Yes. And so we're going to do the reverse. We're going to replace our lug nuts now. Yes. We're going to tighten them by hand. Okay. If they are... So painfully tight to to twist Mm -hmm. that you can't do it by hand. One, let's make certain you're not cross-threaded. Okay. So as you're starting it, make certain that you get a good, solid, even threading. Okay. If it's cross-threaded, it's going to lock up really quick. We're going to back up one step here, Mr. Shop Talk. What does cross-threading mean? So cross-threading is if you go to put the nut on at slightly... uh, The nut? Yeah, the, the lug nut. Okay. If you're putting it on at an angle. Okay. So if it's not going straight on, mm-hmm. it will still screw in a little bit yeah. because the threads are close enough together. Okay. So if you screw it in a little bit and then it's impossible to move, okay. 
that's cross-threaded. Okay. okay. And then we're gonna I'm gonna pull it down just one more step here. Okay. Okay. The threads are the spirally parts. They are the spirally okay. parts. Okay. I'm just making sure that okay. we're we're because this this could just sixteen year old me didn't understand any of this. Okay. When my dad was doing this whole this whole so don't cross thread it. I don't know what that means. Well then so, that's yeah. Because okay. cross threading it is then ruining if you put too much pressure on it, if you decide that no you didn't cross thread it and you just need to grab the wrench and bear down on it mm-hmm. you will very likely destroy both the nut and the thread that's yes. on the wheel yes so you're not weak you probably just <laughs> cross threaded this you're not so. weak you're just wrong um, <laughs> <laughs> that'll be the name of the podcast yeah. you're not weak yeah. just wrong so when you've if you've cross threaded it it's probably very hard to move you need to probably get the wrench and back it off okay so take it off Take your time, get it straight and even, and put it on. Because you're calm, cool, and collected. You are calm, cool, and collected. And not sobbing in the night. Right. Correct. Uh, So you're going to get it on, and it's either going to move very easily or with a little bit of effort by your hands, Mm -hmm. or you may just have to lightly coax it with the wrench. Yes. Anything more than that, we've probably got an issue. Um, But if it is twisting and you know for a fact that it's not cross-threaded, well, then you may just have to bear down with the wrench a bit. But get it hand-tightened as best you can. Yes. And we're going to try to make certain that the tire's not wobbly as much. Uh, yeah, make sure that it's it's yeah. secure-ish. Get a, this get isn't a, drive-ready. This is just to right. make sure that the tire isn't, you know. Wiggle. Yeah, we want to make certain that the tire is as vertical as it can be. Yes. Up and down. We have got it pushed to the back. We've got our threads or our lug nuts on as best as we can. Then we can go ahead and slowly lower the jack. Uh, that way we get the spare tire to touch the ground. Yes. We're not fully removing the jack. Okay, so we're just gingerly setting it down. Right. Enough that the little bit of the car's weight yes. has made contact. We want to put some of the car's weight okay. on the tire. Yes. That way we can use friction and gravity again to okay. tighten our lug nuts. But since we don't know if the, if the spare tire was perfectly vertical, mm-hmm. we don't want to put all the weight on the car on the tire. Yes. So we're going to put just enough on there, maybe a half inch or so. Okay. Uh, then we can go through and we're going to tighten our lug nuts. Yes. But there's a specific pattern to that. So we're not supposed to do it clockwise or counterclockwise, like just all the way around? Just one, two, three, four, all the way around? You do not want to do it all the way around. <gasps> really? Yes. I know this. I just want to sound really I know excited. you do. <laughs> um, okay. So the great part of tightening bolts to anything, especially tires, is that you want to go around and allow the the pressure and the weight to evenly distribute. Okay. So if you have five lug nuts, yes. you're going to use a star pattern. Okay. So you'll pick one to start with, whichever one, take your favorite, it doesn't matter. Start with that one, and then go, you're going to skip the next one to the right or the left. Okay. Take a pick. So you're going to skip one, and then tighten the next one, and then skip another one and tighten the next one, skip another one, and tighten the next one, and you're going to keep going around so that every time you go around, you're either skipping or hitting the ones that you skipped or hit the last time. So that way you're going to go around and just tighten them up one at a time, Yeah. and then you just keep on going around until you cannot tighten them anymore. Okay, so I'm going to explain it in a different way, (laughs) just because I want to do that math math class you can also solve it this way okay just pick one you know how you used to draw you when you draw the stars you do the little i'm seeing i'm making the hand motion do you all see it i'm making the hand motion okay so you you start just imagine you're drawing the star that's what you do i mean so you can you can do the the pragmatic way that he was just saying where you skip one then go then skip one or draw the star that's what i like to do draw so the i do star. one go to the top mm-hmm. then i go down to the bottom then i go to the left then i go to the right and then I go back down to the bottom, and then around and around we go. And that works. Yes. Left brain and right brain. Brought to you by <laughs> Abby and Tyson. Right. So just make certain that you're skipping one. Uh, some cars, however, only have four. <gasps> so draw me that star. I could. I'm not going to. That would not be a very pretty no, star. It would not be a pretty star. Okay, so when you only you have four. do anything four, I'm going to. Yes. I, I believe you. When you only have four, you can start in, obviously you're going to start in a corner. So you Slow could, down, Cali boy. <laughs> so we'll pretend that there are two on the top, two on the bottom. You would start top left. Okay. And then go bottom right. Okay. And then you do top right and then bottom left. And then just bottom right, top left. You just kind of want to hop wherever you can. Mm-hmm. So hop across 
and then just go to a neighbor. Well, it's basically... And hop across and go to a neighbor. The answer is basically the first one is never one of its neighbors. Right. But the second one, one of its neighbors. Right. And then go across. No neighbors, yes neighbors. No neighbors, yes neighbors. Right. Oh, see? It's, it's they, easy. Why don't they just write that in the manual? Mm-hmm. So, okay, so we've, we've tightened our lug nuts mm-hmm. with all of the mighty forces that, yes. that, that physics can allow us. And you want to get them pretty darn tight. But once you're at a, a pretty solid level of tight where you're actually struggling, mm-hmm. go ahead and put your jack the rest of the way down. Okay. Your tire is pretty well guaranteed to be about as centered as you're going to get it. It's on there. Perfect. So... Take your jack all the way down. You can put your jack away. Uh, we want to do one final tightening on your right on your nut. Now that we've gotten all of the all of the gravity and yes. the car is now backwards. All the know? gravity, all the weight, everything there. You're okay. not going to fear of your car sliding off into a ditch now because your parking brake is on. Well, obviously, yeah. Yes. Um, so you're going to go ahead and just do one more full blown tighten everything as tight as you can get. With all the energy you have left. Since you've finished crying. Right. Yes. Right. So if you have a pipe with you to extend out your wrench, use it. If you have any extra tools, go ahead and use it. I feel like I'm going to recommend the pipe anyway. Yeah. Just in case, because it, it's, it's the middle of, like, the night you know, mm-hmm. on highway. You know, there, yeah. there are there still bandits on the road? Is that, a, is that a thing? Or am I just watching too much, too much Once Upon a Time in Game of Thrones? I mean, you got to fend them off. They're going to come try to rob you of all your gold and jewels. Yeah, you should you should be fine nowadays. Okay. I'm imagining. I'm um, imagining, yeah. But just in case, you know. Just in know. case, yeah. yeah. So protection. Right. Lead pipe. But use a little bit of logic here and common sense. <laughs> if you are like me, you're 200 plus pounds and actually, you know, do have a little bit of upper body strength. Okay. You probably do not need the pipe. Okay. To, wait, to, to tighten up lug nuts or to fend off? Robbers on the road. To tighten the lug nuts. Gotcha. Okay. I would definitely prefer to have the pipe to defend myself. Okay, I am cool. useless okay. in a fight. Okay. So, uh, if you are on the smaller side, uh, or dainty and precious, however you decide to, to describe yourself, yes. the pipe is a, an extra part. Yes. The whole idea is you will be moving in a vehicle on these lug nuts at at least 30 miles an hour, yes. hoping they don't come loose. This is another, once we finish this, what what we're doing here, I'm going to discuss some tire safety because some of this drives me bonkers, and this is definitely one of them. If your lug nuts are not on tight and one of your tires flies off, you can't drive on three wheels. Your car starts doing strange and terrifying things that do not end happily for anyone. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So our lug nuts are safely and securely on yes. under the full weight of our car. Then we're pretty much done. Then we're done. We, we just, just need to clean up. Clean up. We put the we put our flat tire in the put back of the car. Put your flat tire in your back trunk where was, or wherever you got. Back where the spare came from. Yes. Yes. So uh, you may it may be worthwhile to have a plastic bag with you mm-hmm. so that you can protect your trunk. Mine is never clean. Yeah. So you can protect whatever's in your trunk from your tire, which is going to be dirty given that it was driving down the road. Yeah. Um, but put your tire away. You're going to need that when you go to re- replace it. Yeah. Um, put your tools away. Don't want to lose those. No. And drive safely to, you know, if it's the middle of the night, try to get yourself either home or if you have to go too far, you may have to call it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, just and call it a night is what I mean by call it in. Um, so you may you may want to stop for the night or call someone that you can confer with. Yes. But you don't want to go too terribly far on that, on a especially on a donut. If you have a full size spare, well, you do whatever you want to do. Right. Just be certain to actually get your tire repaired and replaced so that you can have a spare again. Because then, yeah, your tire's gonna blow up and you're gonna open up. And be like, no, it's the spare from before. Right. And I have, I've known, I've known guys from my early college days yes. who would drive on their donut for six months until they bothered to get their other one repaired or money was tight and you can't justify the $60 for a new tire. Right. Um, Cause they're not that expensive. And, and honestly, if you're going to be driving a car, th- there are some things you can kind of neglect for a little while. Mm-hmm. Please don't neglect your tires. Right. Please. For the love of everything that is holy <laughs> in this world, please don't neglect your tires. Um, 
And and my my recommendation is if you've just changed this tire and you believe that you are just the so superhuman person that's ever happened because you've changed your own tire and you've never really done anything like this before, even if you followed all of our glorious instructions that have no, you know, sidetracking of any sort, um, I would still go and get it checked because A, if you have a donut, you're going to need a new tire anyway. But also you're going to want to make sure that someone who maybe knows more about what they're doing can confirm that yes, even though your tire did not fall off in the last 20 miles that you've driven, it's not going to fall off later. Right. Or it's not going to wobble, like if you're like, well, it's kind of making a weird noise because maybe it's not tightened as much as it should be. Mm-hmm. Make sure someone can also confirm that, yes, you are safe to be driving on this. Right. Um, so either go to a shop, if you've got a family member who's really good at this stuff and is going to, I don't know, like my family members would point and chastise you for your awesome work. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, what you did here was all wrong. Yeah. So you're going to want to do that. But whatever you're going to do, you're going to need to replace your tire no matter what. You're going to either replace your spare, replace your donut, something. Yes. At the end of the day, you're getting a new tire. You're going to want to not put that off. Right. So yes. that's the unfortunate part. Uh, that's a good point, yeah. I mean, okay, so... My my other little points is to make sure, hey, if you notice that your tire is losing air and you fill it up, mm-hmm. and then you notice again that it's losing air some more, so perhaps there's some sort of small leak in your tire. Not so much that it's going flat immediately, but you're like, hey, I could probably still drive on this. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to overfill my tire with air Ooh. and just keep driving around on it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Should I keep doing this? Uh, preferably not. No. Really interesting. Yeah, is that yeah. dangerous? It is a little bit dangerous. Yes, excellent. Yeah. What happens? Uh, well, as your tire is used, it's going to get warm. Yeah. If you have too much air in your tire, that warm air is going to raise in pressure. Okay. And then it will potentially explode. Um, as someone who's heard a, a tire blow. Mm-hmm. It's not a quiet sound. It's not a good time. No, and especially if it's going to be like, let's just say it's your driver's side front tire. Right. Shotgun sound happening that close to you. Because you're very close to that tire. Mm-hmm. You don't. It doesn't seem like you are, but you're very close to that tire. Gunshot sound that loud while you're barreling down the road doing, let's say, 65 miles an hour. Yeah. That's a lot of uh, things that you don't want happening all at once. Correct. Because there's yeah. always, you know, all kinds of things near you. So, hey, please don't do that. I've... I've <laughs> I've known people to do that, and it just, it makes my heart hurt, and I just want to yeah. shake you by your shoulders. Right, and hitting a rock or picking up a bolt or something that's going to give you a flat tire mm-hmm. is not going to immediately cause your tire to shred. Yes. Uh, the further you drive on it, being flat is what shreds your tire. So it's more of a calmer flat. You know, it can still hit pretty quickly, and you can lose control of your car, mm-hmm. but having a tire explode is very likely not only going to scare you uh, and cause you to swerve erratically, Mm -hmm. but it's going to do damage to your car. So the tire blowing out could very likely destroy the outside, the fender well. It can also go inside to your engine. Yes. Um, So nothing cheaper than replacing an engine on a car. But on top of that, now that your tire has exploded, you are now again on three wheels. Yes. You are terrified. Right. All the people around you are terrified. Mm-hmm. It's just it's not a it's not a it's not a right. great situation. Right. So. Uh, and and with a exploded tire, it's less likely to still be on your rim. Yes. So the further you drive, the more damage you do to your rim. Yes. So if you've exploded your tire, you've damaged your car, you've likely hurt your engine in some way, you've scared the crap out of yourself. You're going to need a new pair of pants, and you're going to need a new rim. Yeah. So that adds up very, very quickly. Yeah. If you think tires are expensive, price out some <laughs> rims. Right. Um. So, yeah. So I, I believe the end part of this podcast will just basically be, if you treat anything really nicely on your car, please beat your tires. Mm-hmm. They are the thing between you and the road. If anything goes wrong with them, literally anything that bad happens, when you hydroplane, it's because of your tires. Yes. If you don't, if you're not, like, obviously sometimes with, if you're not braking right, it's your brakes. But if you're skidding... When your brakes are fully locked, that's your that's your tires. Right. On your i on ice, it's your tires. They are good, fine tires that are good for you, winter or whatever your you know habitat is. Make make sure that they're 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 good. 
Right. Spend the money for them. If you <laughs> spend money on mattresses and tires, people, like they're good for yeah. you and they'll make you happy. Yes. Yeah, so with your car, you have the three important parts. Okay. Is one of them tires? One of them is tires. Fantastic. The other one you touched on is your brakes. Excellent. Uh, the other one is your oil. Mm. You know, your car can get along with neglecting, like you said. You can neglect most of the other things. Yes. For, for a, a while. A, t- a little bit. A yeah. while. Yeah. If you have bad or dying tires, Mm -hmm. you're putting yourself, everyone driving with you, and everyone on the road in danger. Yes. Uh, If you have bad brakes, you're putting yourself, everyone with you, and everyone on the road in danger. And if you have not changed your oil or checked your oil, or if you have run out of oil, you put your engine in danger. Um, Not so much everyone else, but an engine can be pricey, so we need to take care of our Mm -hmm. oil. Um, but one thing we need to hit on yes. is the tire pressure itself. Ooh, okay. So I have heard many people talk about how to check your tire pressure, how to know what the right tire pressure is. Gotcha, gotcha. So the pressure on a, on a tire is, it's not what is listed on the side of the tire. Okay. The side of the tire will have the maximum pressure that you can put in it. All right. So that's handy to know, mm-hmm. but it's not what we need. Okay. So the tire pressure you're going to need is actually on a sticker within your driver's door frame. Okay. There's going to be a sticker that will tell you the size of the tires needed, and it will give you the air pressure for the front and rear tires. Okay. So you want to go somewhere near that pressure. So like on a car tire, you may have a max pressure of 45. Okay. But you want to be in the 35 range is the most common, 30 to 35. On an SUV, you may have tires that can go up to 65. But those tires will typically have a pressure range of 40 to 50, okay. somewhere in that region. Uh, and neglecting that or getting it wrong can do a lot of damage to your tires, mm-hmm. uh, your gas mileage, uh, anything in general. Guys, if you take care of your tires, you get great gas mileage. You do. The, the, more, the better air pressure that you have, if it's appropriate, you're going to get significantly better gas mileage. Yeah. Um, and also keep in mind that the temperature will have an effect on the reading of air pressure. Okay. So the that makes sense. Yeah. So the pressure rating that you're going to get is based on like I think it's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, I don't know the metric for that. I apologize. Uh, <sighs> I know I'm the worst. Why did I have you on? <laughs> I didn't vet my source, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. So for every you know chunk of degrees that you get colder, the pressure will just naturally read lower. Okay. For anything hotter, it's going to naturally read higher. So just take that into account as you're yeah. checking your pressure. And be certain to actually you, check your tire You check pressure. your pressure every once in a while. <laughs> I know that sometimes uh, the place that I go get my oil changed, they check those for you and say, is there a pressure that you like? This is what they're doing. Hey, this is what your tires look like. It's good to every once in a while have someone kind of come kick your tires a little and tell you what's right. going on. Yeah. So it, it, I, I trust in professionals maybe a little bit too much, but it's just like, hey, please tell me, is, is something wrong here? And again, I'm oddly passionate about tires, but please... Please, <laughs> I just don't want to be behind you, and then your tire explodes, and you start swerving all over the road, because, you know, that's infecting my day. Right, right. And don't be afraid to check your tire pressure on your own as you're getting gas. Yeah. Then you can keep an eye on, hey, the, the last time this thing was this temperature, mm-hmm. and now it's this temperature. Yes. And okay, yeah, you've been driving on it, so it's going to be a little bit higher. Mm-hmm. But if you notice that they're different, or yes. one keeps getting lower... um it's something that you're going to need to take care of. Yeah. Whether you need to patch the tire or get it remounted to the rim or clean the rim, whatever you got to do, it's just better for safety. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, especially like at gas stations, um, and I don't know, maybe this is just a me thing, but um, it's very the um, streetcar name desire. I've always, con- you know, relied on the kindness of strangers. But a lot of the times, like, if you're either struggling to figure out what something's doing or something... A lot of times you can ask, even sometimes the gas station attendants who work there, be like, hey, I'm trying to do this and I'm confused. They help you out. I I know that I've had one of the gas station attendants help me with, like, antifreeze because I was like, oh, there's, like, one kind. No, (laughs) there's not. And he helped me. So they, you know, obviously it's a gas station. They work. They're, they're near cars a lot. They right. may not be experts, but they may be like, here, this is which where your tire pressure gauge faces. This is what it should be doing. Yes. So, these are things that you should be familiar with. So, yes. again, one 
one Sunday afternoon, if you need something to do, go familiarize yourself with your owner's manual and jack locations and make yourself comfortable with your car exactly yeah. because it drives you all over the place you you might as well need to, you know because cars are one of those things if it stops working your entire life is different yes you, like your day like just imagine someone taking your car away from you mm -hmm. how how are you going to function now for the rest of the week if you don't have your car right so, right. so other you... things you can kind of figure it out like i don't have my phone well i got my laptop right. i don't figure it out from there but your car it's transportation. Uh, that's a little first world right there. It is absolutely first world problems. Okay, okay. I'm saying it's absolutely first world problems, <laughs> but I'm just saying cars are something you're very dependent on. Right. If it goes away, Precisely. you're in trouble. Precisely. So, yeah. Well, this 10-minute podcast was brought to you by <laughs> We Talk Too Much. So hopefully you found all of this very entertaining um, and very educational. Entertaining and educational is what I strive for. So... Thank you to my wonderful husband for joining and talking. We were very scholarly in some parts of that. We almost didn't sound married. We just sounded like a genuine interview. Middle come, couple parts, we, we definitely sounded married. But You could have confused me for someone who knew what I was doing. I know. I was confused for a little while, and then I remembered who you were. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So thank you very much for joining. Guys, if you think Tyson is the greatest guest ever and you would like him to come back, you should email me at learn to adult at gmail.com, or you can get a hold of me on Twitter, at learn to adult You can also subscribe and rate me on this whole podcast. Actually, not just me, but the whole podcast on iTunes. Five stars would be great. You know, four stars I'll, I'll take, and anything lower than that, I'll cry, much like my tire has exploded on the side of the road, but I will I will take it like, a, like an adult. Yes, hashtag adulting. Yes. All right. So thank you again, Tyson, for telling all of my lovely listeners about tires and how strangely passionate we are about them. <laughs> and I will see you guys next week. Bye.